With the recent release of the Galaxy S24 Ultra and all of its AI features, and then learning it's actually going to be coming to the S23 series as well, I wanted to check out the S23 Ultra and see how it holds up. I'm Iggy the Tech Guy, and let's find out. First, we're going to touch on build quality. The Galaxy S23 Ultra is still built brilliantly here into 2024, and with the release of the S24 series being just a slight refinement on last year and the year before that anyway, I think that it holds up just fine here in the newer landscape of things. It is holding its own build quality wise. It has all of the major pluses of a larger phone, like its beautiful 6.8 inch quad HD display. It caps out at 1750 nits, which again, isn't as bright as they can go today. And I understand that, but that is a logarithmic scale in the first place. So realistically, you're not seeing the craziest of increases and you can still see this thing amazingly in broad daylight. That's not even an issue in my opinion. So if you're looking for something to be a flaw, comparatively speaking to the S24 Ultra, the only thing that you can really make note of is that it's not made of titanium on the rails. It is just regular metal, but it does still have the glass back. It's Gorilla Glass Victus 2. It's still holding up well today. I understand that the Galaxy S24 Ultra does have an anti-glare display, which is probably the biggest thing and why you wouldn't want to purchase the Galaxy S23 Ultra over the S24 Ultra. But for it being at a discounted price versus the current new champion, you're still getting a vast majority of the things you would with the S23 Ultra versus the S24 Ultra, in my opinion. The cameras on the back of the device pretty much line up perfectly fine with the Galaxy S24 Ultras. So that's something that hasn't really changed. It just looks very, very similar to last year. I don't think that you're gonna be upset that you decided, hey, I'm gonna go and save some money on the Galaxy S23 Ultra when it comes to build quality. You're not gonna be missing that much that you're like, man, I really should have gone for that. And in my opinion, the Galaxy S21 Ultra as my favorite design from Samsung right before they consumed the Note series into the Ultra series. So it's less boxy than these devices are. I think truly the Galaxy S23 Ultra, the Galaxy S22 Ultra, and the Galaxy S24 Ultra, they're so boxy and so it's real sharp in the hand. The S21 Ultra wasn't sharp in the hand, it was very rounded. So that, in my humble opinion, is actually peak design for their Ultra series right before they decided to go with the boxy design. So as far as build quality goes, the Galaxy S23 Ultra is amazing. It's huge, but it's a little too boxy and sharp in the hand. So that is something that you guys should take note of is that it does, after a long time, feel a little fatiguing in the hand. But if you were already going with the Ultra series, or you're coming from an older phone that's pretty large, you're not really gonna be that upset with this. It's still huge, great viewing experience on the display. The display, like I said, is 6.8 inches and it's Quad HD. So there's no issues in that department. I think people are really gonna enjoy the viewing experience that they get through this display. It is so wonderful in my opinion. It is the best part of this phone aside from cameras. The display is beautiful. Your viewing experience of any videos, of any photos of any kind, any media that you consume on this device is going to be wonderful. It's going to be so good. And that's probably one of the hugest reasons why you would pick something up like this is because you wanna have the best of the best viewing experience when you're viewing your media because most of us do anyway. I mean, you're probably watching this on your phone right now. So the Galaxy S23 Ultra is no slouch in that department suddenly here in 2024. It's not obsolete. It is a great device in the build quality department. It's weighty, it feels good to use. Again, slight nick at it being boxy, so it does hurt after a while in your palm. But for the most part, you're still gonna enjoy this experience. And I think that most people who decide that they're gonna pick this up over the S24 series are gonna be perfectly happy. That all being said, the build quality department is a major go for me here. I think you guys would love this device for its build quality and how it feels in the hand and how premium it truly is. So build quality is a go. Now we can talk experience of the device. This kind of encapsulates the software, the speed and fluidity and the processor of this device, which I might add is the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 for Galaxy. So it is a bit faster on paper than a lot of other 8 Gen 2 devices. I do have a OnePlus 11 and the benchmarks do not lie. There is a bit more oomph and speed optimization in the Galaxy S23 Ultra versus the OnePlus 11 and they both technically use the same processors. So that is something to note for you guys is that on paper when you look at the benchmarks and you see the 
the speed, it's because they optimized the processor specifically for Samsung. They did away with the Exynos and were like, we're just gonna work with Qualcomm, can't beat them, join them type of situation. And they did an excellent job here in that department. Speed and fluidity are no issues on this device. Scrolling through your apps, through your social media, clicking on apps and watching videos and all that stuff runs perfectly fine on these devices. And I don't think you're gonna be upset that you decided that you were gonna go with this device in the speed department. It's, there's a reason why it was named like the number one phone for most people in 2023, because it had everything. It had all the bells and whistles. It was the fastest device around. It was optimized for the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. Yes, the S24 Ultra has the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, and that's great. And it's also for Galaxy, so it's gonna be faster. It's gonna have better multi-core performance, better GPU performance, but Day-to-day -day wise, the Snapdragon 855 Plus still handles like a champ, even here in 2024. From my old OnePlus 7T Pro McLaren, it's still a speedy and snappy device. So take that speed and fluidity into consideration that most devices since 2019 and the OnePlus 7 Pro have felt snappy and responsive and some of the fastest devices you've ever used. Day to day, obviously the fringe cases of playing games and all that matter, but you can still play all of the top titles at, at the top specs, to be honest. So if you really wanted to, you could. So that's not even an issue here. You're going to breeze through your apps, day to day tasks, even the hard tasks like playing games or running these benchmarks and things like that it blazes through literally everything if you're trying to chop through some 4k footage and optimize it and export it you can do that with no problem on the galaxy s23 ultra it is everything is a breeze on this device and i don't think you're going to even really notice it if you were to play with an s23 ultra or an s24 ultra they're still going to feel very speedy and very similar in the day-to-day so that's very negligible. If you're looking for something that's gonna be great in experience and in software and all that stuff, this definitely is no slouch. Samsung's One UI has really hit a stride and there's also a crap ton of customization. You can use the Good Lock application, scroll through there, see the theme park, you can theme your Samsung keyboard, you can mess with the lock screen, there's even S Pen options that you can mess with, there's notification options. It literally has a plethora of things that you can go through, so software and fluidity and speed and experience are all encompassed here into one great amazing device that you would love to use and it has an extra feature too which is the S Pen. So the S Pen obviously I do not use that all the time it is not something that I'm constantly reaching for but when I do need it or if I want to use it for some specific use case like being more refined when I draw on a picture or try to you know circle something or if I just need to jot down a note really quickly the S Pen is a very useful thing and I'd rather have it and not need it the need it not have it kind of situation so it's really great that they've added this into here and when you need to use it it's there and that's an awesome thing because you can just tuck it away in the phone and forget about it if you don't want to and use the phone just as a normal device without the extra benefit of the S Pen. But all in all, it works very well. It's very responsive. I love that there's a quick note feature where you just pull out the S Pen and you can start writing down on the display. There are so many different options and so many different things that you can truly do with this. You can sign documents, you can draw, you can do all sorts of things. And the response rate is so negligible at this point. I think it's like two milliseconds or something like that. Obviously I might be wrong on that because I haven't checked the specs on it, but it is basically just instant. And I think there's actually AI in it to detect where you're gonna go next anyway. So it's even doing better than that. It's doing more than what you would need for the day-to-day -day on an S Pen level or on any type of digital pen for design or documents. So the S Pen is a huge major goal in this experience alongside all the other things I mentioned. If we're talking about Samsung refining their software and just seeing that day-to-day, -day, the S23 Ultra encompasses everything you would want in a phone, everything but the kitchen sink in its experience, software and fluidity. So in the experience and software, it is a major goal for me as well. So let's move on. Next, we can talk about those cameras. So there's actually four cameras on this device. You get a wide, ultra wide, two telephotos, so you're actually looking at some really great cameras on this device. You get three times telephoto and you get a 10 times telephoto. You can zoom all the way into 100 times and it actually takes really great photos at its maximum depth of 100 times. All of course, with the major telephoto lenses, you're getting great pictures at three times and great pictures at 10 times. So that's not really an issue. They did change that up on the Galaxy S24 Ultra, so it is slightly different. There are different focal lengths, but those are the only true notable things. I think the S23 Ultra 
actually takes better photos that are all the way zoomed in too. So that's really cool to notice is that <laughs> you're actually kind of getting a better camera set for the most part if people like using the gimmicks. The S23 Ultra is going to be better in the camera department. It takes really solid photos. So I'm going to just shut up and I'm going to show you a few photos right now. As you can see, the photos are no slouch in this department. If you wanted to have something that's so well-rounded and can take photos and video in so many niche scenarios and also in the major ones, even in low light versus regular, it's your well-rounded camera that you have in your pocket at all times. It does every and any task you need it to do. It's probably a lot right up there with the best of the best even here in 2024 to be honest with you. The software processing on these photos are nothing short of the best so it's gonna really do any and everything that you need it to do in the camera department if you need wide ultra wide telephoto macro. It does all of it and not just does all of it but it does it all so well that you don't even have to think about it. You're just pointing and shooting and getting the job done. If you want to take pictures or take video of your family, this is one of those devices that is going to do any and everything you need to throw at it. So for cameras, it's 100% a major go in that department. Like I said, for the display and the cameras, you're looking at two of the top reasons why you would pick this up. So cameras, 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 Galaxy S23 Ultra, some really great cameras, and I don't think you can go wrong. Now let's talk battery life of this device. Uh, as far as the battery life goes, this device has a huge battery. It's got 5,000 milliamp hours, and so it's not gonna be a slouch in that department either. Optimization in these devices is at a point where you can pretty much use this for two days if you wanted to in light use. I am a rather heavy user, so I do get through a whole day, and that's no trouble anymore. Like MKBHD said, everybody's always been fighting for the day of use, and I'm right up there for heavy power user, and so when I need a device to last me all day, the Galaxy S23 Ultra will do that. And sometimes if it is a light day, you can get a little bit more squeezed out of it until the next day before you have to start charging. And charging is 
Obviously not as good as my OnePlus 11, so that is something that I'm very spoiled with in the OnePlus 11's department, where it's 80 watt fast charging versus 45 watt fast charging. But again, 45 watts is still better than nothing at this point. And if you pick yourself up the 45 watt fast charger, you're gonna get it charged in a little over an hour, which with such a big battery and such a big phone, that's actually not that bad at all. That's still really fast and you're gonna not really have to worry about it. You can plug it in for 10, 15, 20 minutes and you're gonna get a day's worth of battery out of it. And even in that time, I'm again, just spoiled with the OnePlus 11 and it's 80 watt fast charging. And that does degrade the battery a little bit more than the Galaxy S23 Ultra's 45 watt charging. And that's probably why Samsung went that direction and not trying to be a gimmick and make it super fast so that the battery's longevity is really pushed forward even further. So that's something to really keep in mind is that you are getting yourself an amazing battery, well-rounded charging. It will serve you right here in 2024. The S24 Ultra technically has a little bit more optimizations with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, so it is gonna probably be a little bit better in that department, but the Galaxy S23 Ultra is so good at this point that you're not really gonna worry too much, I don't think. I think you're still very much gonna enjoy the experience in the battery department on the Galaxy S23 Ultra, so battery life, charging, all of that is a major go as well in that department. Next, let's talk about gaming on the Galaxy S23 Ultra. I know that I could have covered this in the experience portion, but gaming I feel like is just something that's a little bit separate and is really pushing and taxing a phone anyway. And like I said before, you can game at some really extreme levels on a, on a device that has a Snapdragon 855 or 855 Plus. So spoiler alert, the Galaxy S23 Ultra and its Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 for Galaxy can game at the highest settings, any game you throw at it, whether that's Call of Duty or Genshin Impact or even Fortnite. I do have some footage of myself playing Fortnite on this device that I can throw up for you guys to see. And it has no hiccups, no lags. It does every and anything that you needed to do in that department if you need to game. If you're a heavy user and you really like to game on your phone and you're looking for something that is going to get the job done in that department, this is no exception. The Galaxy S23 Ultra is going to game its butt off. You are going to thoroughly enjoy your experience with gaming on this because of how well optimized everything is and how great the GPU is and how great the CPU is in general. So gaming is a major go as well. I don't think there's anything in this phone or device that is gonna make it a no-go for you to purchase here in 2024. So to recap the Galaxy S23 Ultra, in all the departments, of course it's a major go. Of course this is a great pickup going here into 2024. You're not gonna be upset that you decided to purchase this. I've seen it for as low as 820 bucks on Amazon Renewed. So yeah, that's a, still a little pricey, but it is undercutting even the regular S24s versus the Galaxy S24 Ultra in general. So. And they did raise the prices up a little bit even more on those devices as well. So you're not going to be upset that you decided you're going to purchase the Galaxy S23 Ultra. You got a little bit of extra cash burning a hole in your pocket, especially here during tax season. You're going to not be upset that you decided, hey, I want to go with last year's flagship. The pricing is probably the only reason why anybody would steer clear of this. And you could get yourself an S21 Ultra for much, much cheaper, under $400 at this point. The Galaxy S21 Ultra is going to give you a majority of these features, aside for the AI ones that are currently going to be coming to this device as well. But the S21 Ultra gets a majority of those things done. All of the categories I mentioned, the only category where it will not compete as much is in the battery department because it has the same milliamp hours. And if you get one that's renewed, obviously they do, you know, fix it up to the main, main requirements of basically a brand new phone. So you're going to get the most out of the battery, even from 2021. Still, the Galaxy S21 Ultra is great, but it's just not going to be that maybe two day phone like the S23 Ultra is. Optimization has really made a stride in the last two years. So if you're looking for that department, if battery life is what's most important to you, obviously you don't have to go with the S21 Ultra. You can just dish out a little bit more for this Galaxy S23 Ultra here. For around 830 bucks, you can get this device here versus the S21 Ultra. But again, if you're over halving the price and getting the S21 Ultra, that's not a bad deal to be honest but if you're looking for something that's not super old that's not going to really break the bank in general for today's standards the galaxy s23 ultra is a major go in all of the departments i mentioned so all in all yes the galaxy s23 ultra should 
be a consideration here into 2024. It isn't suddenly obsolete like many people may believe. It is a device you could still use day to day and still feel like you have the best of the best, even if you were to throw it up against alongside the Galaxy S24 Ultra. I don't think you'd notice too much missing from it. So yes, in my humble opinion, the Galaxy S23 Ultra is worth your hard earned cash here in 2024. And that's it for the video here today. If you really like this video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you dislike this video, go ahead and hit the dislike button. If you really like this video, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to get more content from me. And as always, I am Miggy the Tech Guy and I am out. Peace.